Welcome to the Analytics Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan McNamara, and this is a, a free preview of a podcast you'd get over at analyticsdynasty.com as part of uh, a yearly subscription. Uh, you can find all our uh, subscriptions uh, over at analyticsdynasty.com, as well as the 2022 edition of the Analytics of Dynasty, which is available uh, now and can be downloaded uh, you can go ahead and check that out, analyticsofdynasty.com. Every day in the offseason, we release a podcast, different topics. Uh, Thursdays, it's a 30 minutes of Dynasty Trades, a trade-centric show, typically, uh, when I have guests. Sometimes I'll do one on my own, but every every Thursday, it's a, it's a trade show. Uh, we'll do uh, strategy as well on Sunday, and then different stuff during the week. So go ahead and check this out. Uh, again, if you're interested in subscribing, analyticsatdynasty.com, 388 podcasts last year, so more than one a day, um, and have all your dynasty needs covered. So um, go ahead, analyticsatdynasty.com, to check that out, and I hope you enjoy this podcast. It's with Pat Fitzmorris. He is uh, the host of Fitz on Fantasy and uh, an editor at uh, Fantasy Pros. Uh, and I actually joined him on his podcast this past week uh, where we did some discussion uh, of players, strategy, and the like. And then he joined me for 30 minutes of Dynasty Trades talking a lot about the players that we talked about on his uh, on his show. So uh, go ahead, enjoy that. And if you want more, analytics at dynasty.com. Until next time, continue embracing the variants. We'll talk again very soon. Welcome to the Analytics of Dynasty Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan McNamara. This is a Thursday trade edition here, and I've got a special guest, Pat Fitzmorris. Uh, he is uh, at, at Fantasy Pros, was a colleague of mine at Football Guys for a time, uh, Fits on Fantasy. I was just a podcast guest on his podcast that's out this week uh, on that feed, um, and we're doing this afterwards, so we're recording Monday afternoon. And Pat, thanks for joining us. Um, we, you wanted to talk about a whole bunch of players in, in your podcast. And I was like, all right, let's just talk trades on these, almost all the players that we talked about. So I'm interested in sort of what your take is. Um, Trevor Lawrence. So you have Trevor Lawrence high. Um, I think I have him lower than you do. Um, and I'm interested to see sort of where the catch, where the intermediate range of him would be. So um, let's just go, uh, because the other ones here are a little all over the place. You got Trevor Lawrence and Rashad Penny for Russell Wilson and David Joku. Interesting, Jordan. Um, so I'm going to go with the Lawrence Penny angle here, even though I am a big Russell Wilson guy as a, uh, you know, Wisconsin graduate. Um, oh, so Russ I didn't like a realize god. that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Russ is like a God to me, but, uh, I'm a little worried about how the season ended for him. And I know coming back from the, the fractured, uh, finger was a, a big deal but like i don't know if he can he always used to have that spin move where he would get outside mm-hmm. of the pass rush and make something happen and like i'm not seeing that anymore i just wonder how well his game is going to age so um like give me lawrence and even though i have no idea what to expect from penny like i don't know if this is sustainable at all because we're only seeing it now in year four right. um but yeah I, I think i i want the youth movement here with with lawrence and this is basically for you. This is Lawrence over Wilson. So you're taking the Lawrence side over Wilson. The penny for Joker side doesn't much matter to you, right? Yeah, that's it. And I okay. like I do feel like I'm picking up a little something with the penny Njoku thing, even though I still have hope Njoku can can spark with that athleticism wherever he goes next. Yeah, yeah. Buffalo. Buffalo. We, we're, we're, <laughs> any tight end bad, that wants to, any offensive player wants to come up to Buffalo, we're glad to have you. Um all right. So, so, uh, by the way, Wilson, um, I was, I went to law school in Ohio and it was right. It was the year that whatever year that he came into Wisconsin was, and I forget it was when I was there it was it 2010, maybe 11, something like that. But I know that they were playing Ohio state and I was, I was like, this Russell Wilson guy is amazing. And, uh, and I remember he came, you know, they beat them. And I was like, this is, there was like this great, you know, game between, between the two. And I was, I was just so happy that Ohio state lost because, because I rooted against them. And it was Russell Wilson was the avenue, which that happened. And, um, and yeah. And so now he's basically come to where he is. So it's pretty awesome. Do you think oh, five, so him and Stafford are the same age, basically about the same age. Who do you have more confidence in over the next five years, Stafford or Russell Wilson? 
I think Stafford, I think his game is going to age a little bit better. Yeah. Um, you know, it's less mobility based. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think, you think Russell Wilson ends up back in Seattle? Oh man. I, so I, I had liked the idea of him going to the saints. Cause I know mm-hmm. when he put together that list of teams, he would be willing to, uh, go to, there were only like three or four and some were <laughs> like non-starters, like the bears who had already taken their quarterback by this right. time. And one of them was the saints. And I thought like, yeah, Ross and, and Sean Payton, that could work. And uh, with Sean Payton stepping away in the Saints and cap hell, I just don't know if that's going to happen. So I kind of think like the, the likelihood of uh, players getting traded away, including Aaron Rodgers here, sometimes gets overstated. So I'll say it's better than 50-50. He does stick around in Seattle. Yeah. I wonder if that's an optimized situation for him. Like with you saying, I, and I, I think you're right uh, about you know some of the limited mobility stuff. Like I wonder if you could sort of, not pigeonhole him, but like in, in the way that Rogers has been a little bit more, uh, I think optimized in this version of Rogers than he wasn't prior versions of him. I, I wonder if that would work for Russell Wilson or if he's just not, um, you know, if he's, I don't know if immune to that is the right word, but, um, you know, if that's not something that just stylistically he would do versus, you know, where Rogers, I think has been better, uh, and where he's a little bit more, you know, streamlined, I guess. Yeah. Um, I do wonder, like, I'd also love to see Seattle. I know it's like almost this organizational ethos they have of like not wanting to invest in the offensive line and cut Mm -hmm. corners there as much as possible. Like I would love to see them just like sign the top free agent offensive lineman there and draft an offensive line, but like get Mm -hmm. Russ an actual like offensive line and, and make him like a pocket quarterback a pure pocket guy late in his career and see how that could work like he's yeah. got the pass catchers in place get the man some protection and, and let's try that for a change i wonder if as you sat here watching last night and like i have a subscriber chat we were discussing it and it was like you watch what stafford just did and what they paid for stafford and the fact that it worked and you wonder if a team like Tennessee is looking at that and being like, hey, is Russell Wilson the type of player that elevates us to sort of get to, to take the jump, right? Or is, you know, are there other teams out there that that view Russell Wilson as this year's Stafford in terms of the Colts, right? Like the team that can take a good team to be an elite team um, where they don't have an answer. And I just wonder if the market I sort of agree with you that it's harder to trade like an elite quarterback than I think we just, we fantasy guys just, Oh, we can do anything at any time. Like right. I, I, I agree with you on that, but I wonder if the incentive is really there in a way that maybe we haven't seen it for franchises in prior years. Yeah, you're right. Um, a team that's on the doorstep that feels like yeah. uh, they're just that quarterback away. And, you know, maybe Denver, if things don't work out with mm-hmm. Rogers makes a play for him, or maybe, you know, I know uh, Tepper wants to, to swing his money mm-hmm. bags around in Carolina and maybe that's a possibility. I don't know. Um, yeah. And I do think Carolina has got a lot of the pieces in place. Like that's a pretty good young defense. So um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting this off season. Uh, I think we will see some interesting QB movement. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we get, I, I put Lawrence trades in here. We spent five minutes talking about Russell Wilson, which is always the beauty of this segment. Um, <laughs> Russell. <laughs> so Trevor Lawrence for Deshaun Watson. Oh man. I, I, I know I should probably want the Watson side here, but I'm going to stick with Lawrence just because uh, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a Lawrence believer. Like I, I saw enough of him at Clemson where I just feel like it's going to work out eventually. And I'm, I'm just maybe too eager to give him a mulligan for the urban Meyer year, but I'm mm-hmm. giving him a mulligan for the urban Meyer year. And uh, yeah, just like it concerns, obviously the off the field stuff with, with Watson is concerning. Um in all probability just gets like a six game suspension, but it's just enough to like scare me away Mm -hmm. and into, into Lawrence. If, if this trade takes place, if you get this offer and it's September 1st and you have certainty on the Russell or on the Deshaun Watson, and let's just say it's a six game suspension, just assume that's what it is, but he is going to be the starting quarterbacks come week seven for whatever team that is. Does that change your calculus? Does I think it, it does. Do you take I Watson in that scenario? Yeah, okay. I think I do. Okay. Yeah. What would be the, if you lost another year from Watson, is that when you take Lawrence? 
I like think we, a full a full yeah. year, yeah, would be the okay. difference. Like I okay. don't want to I don't want to sit out a full year with him. Got it. Got. It. I, I think that's I think that's reasonable. Um, Lawrence for um, Nick Chubb, which I think is just for so many reasons is a fascinating trade. Yeah, that is. Um, I'm still going to go Lawrence. You know, assuming of course this is super flex, and I it um, is super flex. Yeah, These are all super yeah. flex. Sorry. Okay. Yes. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with the quarterback there. Just, uh, you know, the, as uh, Dynasty Rich of uh, the Dynasty Nerds uh-huh. calls it, the economy of super flex. I think you got to go with the quarterback there. And it seems like this is just like the easiest. Again, I'm not even a Trevor at, at cost. I'm below market on Trevor Lawrence. But I think this seems like the ideal play of how you get an elite quarterback. Like You can't trade Chubb for uh, like you know, Mahomes or Chubb for like that Chubb's not going to be the, the central piece in a trade like that, but he, if he can be a central piece at a trade to a top 10 quarterback, and then you could sort of pivot up, like what would Lawrence plus picks get you who, you know what I mean? Like, is that, right. it's an, I think it's an interesting, um, that, that Avenue of trying to get, trying to jump lanes from non quarterback into quarterback. I think it's really interesting. Um, what do you think? Uh, so, so we talked about Mike Evans a bit um, and, um, Mike Evans for Devonta Smith is a one that, <laughs> that I looked at and I was like, huh. And that's probably a rankings consideration that you had to make. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, so if, if I think if we knew we were getting even one more year out of Tom Brady, this would be a, a Mike Evans slam dunk for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I'm still leaning slightly towards Evans and probably some people are going to think I'm crazy for this. Cause I know a lot of people love Devonta Smith and this is a safe um, space, Pat. You're okay here. You're okay. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, like maybe part of it is that I don't feel like the Eagles have, you know, a, a great passing quarterback in place and, and yet they've kind of reasserted their commitment for Jalen hurts in 2022. So we know uh, Smith is going to be stuck with a below average quarterback. And we've also seen, the trend towards teams not necessarily feeling like they have enough at wide receiver. We saw the the Cowboys keep adding on with CD lamb when they had the chance a couple of years ago. And, and now we saw the Bengals do it with Jamar chase in 2021. So who's to say the Eagles are done. Uh, you know, I, I do think they're going to have a better wide receiver too than Quez Watkins next year. Mm-hmm. So, um, and Jalen and Rager year three, that's, what's going to be. <laughs> yeah. That, that Jalen Rager jump we've all been waiting for. So, um, I'm, I'm going to go with Evans here, the sturdy alpha guy who's, uh, you know, endured a lot of different situations, I guess, in, in eight years with the Buccaneers and has come out of it every year with a thousand yards and, um, you know, usually a lot of touchdowns too. Yes. Yes. That's pretty much, that's pretty much right. Um, you and I were talking, uh, in, uh, on, on your podcast about where he ranks historically. And so I actually looked it up and, um, he is, uh, top 60 all time in, pa- in receiving yards. And so if you look, um, so he's 59th, he's just ahead of Gronkowski in all time receiving yards. But you get, if you gave him another thousand yards, he jump, jumps into the top 45. If you give him 2000 more yards, right? So two more thousand yard seasons, he all of a sudden is going to be in the top like 35 or so, you know, it's very easily he's in the top 30 with three years. Um, it's really interesting, like how very quickly he's going to get to a spot where we're going to turn around and be like, wow, like Mike Evans was a top like 20 guy in terms of total receiving yards in his career. Like, and he could actually end up pretty high in touchdowns too. It's just, do you think he's a hall of famer? Because I know it seems crazy to say that, but uh, like he just, is he a hall of famer? (laughs) I I think he is like, I think the only way he uh, is a debatable case is if like some sort of injury cut his career short in the next couple of years, but Mm -hmm. eight straight 1000 yard seasons, as you mentioned, where he already ranks in the all time list. And I think that game is going to age pretty well because he's always been more of an air yards guy than a yak guy. Mm -hmm. Like he like losing speed is not really going to hurt him much he's a a rebounder a jump ball guy and uh you know pretty pretty good at just getting himself space in subtle ways just enough space for a quarterback to want to fit the ball in to where he is so um yeah i I do think he's going to be a pretty i think he'll be a walk-in hall of famer basically by the time his career is over 
Yeah, it's interesting because, like, again, you just do that same exercise. You give him ten more touchdowns, and he's sixteenth all time. Like that's wow. that's that's when you think about that, you're like, wait a second. And again, like you, you know, we've talked that years about the Nirvana thing. Like all of a sudden, Mike Evans, like I remember, like that was like he was this young guy coming in, and now all the time, all of a sudden, he's going to be like a top twenty touchdown guy. It's like, wait, where yeah. did the time go? Um, and he's got the ring too, which is a big yeah. deal for people. Like he's got at least one ring that he's going to have uh, on his resume. So yeah, I think he's going to be a Hall of Fame guy. Yeah, and if you look like the top. 20 guys in terms of touchdowns the only one that's not in the hall of fame and i don't i don't uh it's heinz ward um that is eligible like fits it fits and oh, wow. antonio gates is in is in there um they're going to be shoe in so is gronkowski um but graham is in there and I'm, I'm sure he will be a hall of famer so like in terms of wide receivers it's really uh it's really heinz ward um and then we'll see like with guys like Antonio Brown a little bit further down, that's an interesting case as well, but like he's putting himself into being in a really elite category. And honestly, like he could be with a couple of years, like he could push top, like top 12, top 10 wouldn't be totally out of the realm of possibility either. So a wild career for him. And again, I think he's largely fantasy um, afterthought. Like he's people, you know, he's what's the next flavor of the week. This Devante Smith trade isn't entirely surprising. <laughs> So, yeah, agreed. Uh, sometimes we uh, just the, the old, boring, consistent guys are like always the most underrated commodity, like in any fantasy sport, baseball, football, whatever, like old and boring is good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you have Mahomes at quarterback one? I've got Allen at quarterback one. Wow. OK, so uh, that's so that's fascinating, because like if you just take the past two years as being like. Allen's been back-to-back quarterback once. Like the, the the number of guys that have done that this century is like four. Like it's not that many. And Mahomes has one, but it's really interesting in terms of when you look at him. Like if if Allen did that again, and I'm not even saying this year, like this upcoming year. If he did it this year, it'd probably be like the best stretch of quarterback play fantasy wise. But um, if like it happened again, like he's putting himself. I think the only people to do it are, um, I think. Peyton Manning and I think Breeze did it at some point too. I think maybe three. There's one other person that did it, um, but I mean, you just it's a it's a really rare category. Um, I, I feel this like I see Herbert over uh, Mahomes. I, you have mm-hmm. Mahomes too behind Allen. I do. Yeah, and then I've uh, then I've got Burrow three and Herbert four. Okay, so I I see people putting other people ahead of like I think Josh Allen's a totally like like if you that's fine like. Um, I, I see people putting other uh, quarterbacks ahead of Mahomes, and it feels exactly like what you just said about Mike Evans, where it's like people are getting bored with like really good production, like really predictable production, and you're just getting bored by it. And it's just like let's do something more interesting. And it's like the exotic intern at the office, and you're like, well, like no, that's not <laughs> like, that's a horrible idea. But <laughs> that's like what that's like exactly kind of what it feels like with people uh, getting bored with Mahomes. It's the same thing with Mike Evans, and it's just it's a really interesting phenomenon. Yeah, and we got like our first uh, shreds of doubt maybe with Mahomes this year with the early season interception binge he had like over the first month and then there was a period where he the touchdowns kind of dried up he had like Mm -hmm. that stretch of five or six games where i think he only had multiple he had like a five touchdown game thrown in there but otherwise Mm -hmm. it was like zero touchdowns or one touchdown for Mm -hmm. like six six games or Mm -hmm. seven games with the five touchdown game thrown in so like there were there were times where his fantasy managers were a little disappointed this year. And it was kind of the first times that Mahomes has given us disappointment. Mm-hmm. And then he, and then you sort of look at the end of the, the end product that he's like quarterback four. <laughs> it's like, right. Wait, it's like, right. And that's a, that's a bad year for Mahomes. Exactly. Right. Which is, which is scary when you consider the fact that like, that's, that's kind of what you're paying for, right? Like you, the worst case scenario, if everything goes pretty poorly, he's going to be a top six guy. You'd be like, okay, like that's, that's a, that's a, uh, again, that's that, I think when people get knock on him, like they're they're worried about other things. Um, it's interesting. Um, so we talked a little bit about the quarterbacks, the younger quarterbacks. Um, and I'm interested because you. So we have we talked about Lawrence, and then um, uh, what do you think about Lance? So there's a couple of them. So Lance for Wilson straight up um, was one that I saw. Yeah, I'm pro Lance here. 
Okay. Um, I'm like, I'm excited about the running ability and uh, like just that, that rocket arm. I, mm-hmm. I think he's going to, um, I, I think he's got a like Jalen hurts rushing upside and uh, is going to be a much better passer. Like it, it might take time, but I think it's going to happen uh, maybe two or three years down the road where we get a, a pretty exotic combination of passing ability and rushing, not necessarily Josh Allen level, but something like approaching that maybe like that's in his range of outcomes. And I think he has a pretty good chance of getting there. Okay. Um, what about him for, so I, there's, there's Trey Lance and Elijah Mitchell for Dak Prescott and Dearness Johnson. Um, so basically the, Lance and Mitchell for Prescott. Essentially. Yeah. I'll take the Lance side of that. Um, you know, Lance for Prescott is a real interesting one. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm probably wrong on this, but I can't remember if I have Lance or Prescott higher in my rankings, but if you juice it a little bit with Mitchell over D Ernest, even though I kind of like D Ernest and, mm-hmm. and think that he could be somewhat valuable, um, Sorry, I'm just checking my rankings real quick. I have to know whether I have Dak or uh, I have Dak one spot ahead of Trey Lance. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, with that little bit of running back upgrade, I would want the Lance side. Okay. All right. Um, Deshaun Watson or Lance? This is the same conversation we had about. Um, still Lance. Still, still Lance. Lance. Does yeah. that same calculus apply to you in terms of six game suspension versus year long suspension with Watson? <sighs> yeah. Um, I'm a little more excited about Lance than Lawrence just because of the running okay. upside. Um, but I, uh, it does basically still work with the same calculus. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. And then I've got, um, we've got one other one here for him and it is, uh, it's, uh, Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo. So this one actually took place, uh, around the time of the trade deadline ish sort of, it was actually in December, uh, it was probably after your fantasy trade, your, your dynasty trade deadlines, but um, close to, you know, it was probably still in season slightly, uh, but, but Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo for Lamar Jackson. Oh, wow, man. That's fascinating. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it would, that one would kind of depend on where my roster was, like how much I felt I was in win now mode. If, if I was in a tear down, like I wouldn't be the one acquiring uh, Jackson in that. Like if I was honest with myself and didn't think I had a, a one year competitive, you know, compete for a title window, mm-hmm. um, I, I would want the, the Lance Jimmy G side of that. And um, boy, in a vacuum, that is so close, man. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess, Give me the the uh, give me the Lamar side. Give me the proven commodity. Okay, I'm, I'm really w- close though. Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's I think it's interesting, and I think the Lamar's probably got more questions than we might otherwise necessarily appreciate. Um, we talked about Cam Akers. We got eight and a half minutes left, so Cam Akers for DK Metcalf straight up. Oh, um, I'm still going with Metcalf here. I mean, mm-hmm. I I admit I'm. Um, Maybe I overvalue wide receivers in Dynasty just because I think they age a little. Like, I still think we have not seen peak DK Metcalf yet. Mm-hmm. Like, I still think there's another gear from him. And I just, we have we talked about this on uh, a little on my show, uh, you know, before we started this one about how we don't know what Acres is going to look like two years from now. All running backs with the injury rates. And this is a guy who's already come overcome a devastating injury. But like, man, the, the, landscape changes so quickly with running backs like give me the wide receiver here to- totally and you can like if acres isn't the the absolute smash you can re- you can recreate him it's tough to recreate like that high level metcalf season yes um acres in a 2022 first so we don't know where it is um but okay. for russell wilson so this is a bridge across the the non-quarterback to quarterback divide and, and it lands you on russell wilson Interesting. Yeah. Assuming I've, I've got something left at quarterback trading away Russ, I would trade away Russ here. And uh, this is going to make me sound like a Russ hater, which is like the last thing I want to be Jordan is the Wisconsin guy. I'm going to send fellow. in a, we're going to send a letter into your alma mater. And, uh, oh and my they're God. Gonna, they're they're going to sternly worded letter to you. <laughs> <laughs> if, if not just outright pull my diploma away from me. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go with acres in the first. Okay. 
all right that's um i i it's i i'm surprised like i find those trades int- really fascinating when they go across positions like that um how about this one so this is another this isn't necessarily entirely a cross position but it's zach wilson and acres for watson so again maybe some of that calculus applies on the watson angle yeah um Man, I just uh, like I want the safe harbor instead of of Watson. And uh, like I saw just enough. Boy, if you had asked me this before Thanksgiving, maybe my answer would have been Watson. But mm-hmm. I saw just enough from Wilson in uh, December to make me think like, you know, yes, OK, there is hope for this guy after all, yeah. especially when next year comes and he gets a full season of Elijah Moore. And, uh, you know, Michael Carter, totally healthy and everything. So uh, and hopefully, you know, a healthy Mackay Becton and uh, like another couple of linemen, uh, which, you know, the Jets need so badly in an overhaul of their O-line. So, yeah, I'll take I'll take that side rather than risk it with Watson. I'm just realizing with the Watson stuff, like I didn't even search Watson for in any of these trades like I, I searched somebody else so i searched lawrence and uh, you know and, and all these trades it was and watson pops up in all of them like it's watson watson's a i think it's a we need to do like a full hour on watson at some point but it's wild the watson um involvement here in the uh, uh in the trade market um jonathan taylor uh you're running back one we discussed him a little bit um uh, so there's a couple of them in here. So Jonathan Taylor, uh, Tyler Boyd, and Debo for Derrick Henry, C.D. Lamb, and Elijah Moore. So a lot of moving pieces, including wow. potentially the best asset on both sides being a cross position running back to wide receiver. Um, who, who was the other one with Taylor? It, Taylor was, Debo and Boyd. Yeah, Tyler Boyd. Yep. Yeah, I'll take I'll take that side. I mean, okay. the other side is very attractive too, but the. Taylor and, and Debo side. That's actually the uh, that anchor. That's the core of a, a dynasty team of mine that has uh, lost two straight championship games. That the Taylor Debo combination. So it should be it should be a contender in twenty twenty two again. You would um, you would hope for um, for sure. Um, how about this one in terms of? I can't believe how many Watson trades ended up in this list. I didn't even realize it was, I didn't realize I was doing it. I was just writing them down. Um, Jonathan Taylor for um, Christian McCaffrey, Derek Henry and the 2022 second. Oh, um, man. Uh, like I got to go for the, the McCaffrey Henry combo there. Cause it just gives you such a spike in immediate 2022 value. Like, right. um, yeah, like that really, however open the title window is for that team, like it gets opened much wider with that trade. I think you have to take it. And you have so many other ways to like, like there's so many ways to win that trade on that, on that side, yeah. right? Like, even, like, even if you love Taylor and he's your running back one, like there's so many ways to win the other side of that deal, which is Taylor gets hurt. You win Taylor uh, isn't the running back one. Um, and McCaffrey as you win, right? Henry performs like he did last year. You probably win, right? Like you, there's just so many ways in which you can win on the other side of that. Um, I've learned my lesson on that type. Of, I, I had one similar to this that involved like Nick Chubb and Delvin Cook a couple of years ago, and I forget there was other pieces involved, but I basically wouldn't give up Nick Chubb for Delvin Cook because I just viewed him better. And there was another key piece, it might have been Aaron Jones. Or something. I forget there was moving pieces to it, but it ended up being very much like this, and that was like one of my biggest regrets in terms of dynasty trading. Is like I think you have to be on the Caffrey side of this, even if you love Taylor, just because there's so many ways to lose on the, like there's so many ways to win this deal bit on the McCaffrey Henry side. Um, That's exactly that, it. If, if Taylor's not a superhero, you don't win that trade. Right, right, right. And if he, God forbid he gets hurt, it's a disaster. You know what I mean? And I don't even worry about that necessarily, but when you're sort of taking that, you know, you're basically making the same bet twice on the other side versus once with Taylor. It's a, it's um you know, it's, it's a, I think a high and plus like if, if both of those are right, like if McCaffrey and Derek Henry are right, like that's a, you're probably, you probably have a buy, you know what I mean? Like right. you're, that's how good your team could be. Um, that's how good your team could be. Um, all right. So let's see, we've got, um, we've got a couple minutes left here and I'd be interested to see sort of your take on, um, we usually play the, the Patrick Mahomes game, uh, you know, what's enough for Patrick Mahomes, but we don't, um, you have him, you have, uh, uh, 
uh, Josh Allen as being as being higher. So I'm be interested to see. We got t- basically two minutes left. Tell me if they've got enough for Josh Allen. So this is Josh Allen for uh, Russell Wilson, a first and a second. Oh, I'd want Josh Allen there. Okay, Josh Allen, uh, Jarrett Patterson, and Harrison Bryant. So basically, two roster fillers for Mac Jones, Air- uh, Austin Eckler, and Debo Samuel. Oh man, that's a nice splatter um boy like i it shouldn't bother me that we don't know what exactly debo samuel's career is going to look like i'm mm-hmm. just kind of confused after the the season we just saw like uh you know the hybrid guys are kind of hard to map out their future with but uh man i still like the allen side here yeah. um yeah and i kind of like jared patterson a little bit too is uh i think he might be a valuable asset at some point i'm, I'm with you on that um all right, Josh Allen uh, and Cole Komet for Trevor Lawrence, Juju Smith-Schuster, and a 2022 first. Again, we don't know exactly where that is, but. Still on the Allen side here, yeah. man. I think that guy is worth his weight in gold in Superflex Dynasty. I'm with you. Trevor Lawrence in a 2023 first for Josh Allen. Does the move in year change your opinion? Oh, boy. Uh, that is going to be a fabulous draft class, but I'm still going with Josh Allen here. Okay. One last one. So we got 20 seconds left. It's Josh Allen. Again, we're going back to the Trevor Lawrence. Well, Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence, JK Dobbins and Ridley. So Allen for Lawrence oh. Dobbins and Ridley. All right. I think you finally swung me to the other <laughs> side of that. Uh, you know, and I'm enough of a Trevor Lawrence guy that's sweetened the pot enough for me with the other pieces. Well, we found out where the Trevor Lawrence, Josh Allen line exists. Pat, <laughs> thanks for joining us on this edition of 30 minutes of dynasty trades. And until next time, continue embracing the variants. We'll talk again very soon.